Now that we're ready to record the static trial, we want to make sure that everything looks pretty good. So we're going to click Live and go to 3D and visually check to make sure all the markers are there. Of course, right now Jason is facing the side. I'm going to have him turn face forward and we can visually check to see that the markers appear to all be there. So you can hold your arms up. We're just going to do a quick recording. We don't see any extra reflections due to any reflections on his clothes, but if he did, we have some opaque tape here ready to cover those up if need be. So let's record the static trial. Okay, you can relax and we're going to make sure everything is fine. So, now that we've generated this static trial and all the connections between all of the different markers, we look at the 3D view. Now we're doing pretty good. We're, we are going to remove the medial markers. And although this marker set doesn't require them, we're going to leave the lateral markers at the knee and ankle so that later on in this course we can still use this data to discuss the conventional gait model. So, if you wouldn't mind, going to the beginning of the room, walk normal, and on my go, walk the other direction just right along. Go! Good. Come on back here. Would you say that that's your normal walking speed? Okay. Yeah. It appears to be uh, faster. So, no, much slower and kind of mechanical. Okay. And this is actually a common thing when people first uh, do a gait analysis. They uh, walk awkwardly, thinking that they're going to damage them. Okay. Uh, but just Medium. walk normally, right? Okay. You're down at the main square, okay. just walking down the street. Okay. Now, it, it's a very good practice to note that. So I'm going to write uh, questionable uh, walking speed. I'll uncheck it, and we'll perform a another test. Okay, we're ready to capture, and go. Okay, that seemed much more natural. Yeah. Okay. Going back to the other end of the room, we're just going to check over this data very quickly, make sure it's looking good. Now, we're not too worried about the fact that some of the markers aren't labeled right. The important thing is that it's all there. Now, since we created a completely new project, and with this uh, motion capture system, it's a learning auto label. So the, very, the first times it might have a little bit more trouble, but the more patients that you run through the system, the better it gets. This being the first one, as it's a brand new project, it has a little bit of trouble, but all in all, it did pretty well. One of the things, notice for example, this marker seems to be missing, but we add it in there. Now that's all okay. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. For the most part, I can say that this data is looking good, so we're just going to go ahead and record several more in a row. Okay, go. Now we're ready for another, and go. Okay, now notice I'm not going through and correcting anything right now. You want to maximize your patient's time. As you can see, we can actually record in both directions. Although the cameras weren't necessarily set up to be able to aim, be aimed optimally for both directions, 
we can, and we'll look at that data later on. But right now, we're just going to collect several trials. Go ahead and go. So that we're sure that the data is good. We'll do one final trial. Although, when we process our data, most likely, we're only going to use three or four trials. Having more is not a problem. Having less will result in problems. So, go ahead and go. So, out of these seven trials, we probably have several good ones. So, what we're going to do is quickly check over it before we take the markers off the case. So, this trial was auto-labeled. And I see that we have a few markers on here uh, that were not labeled. However, I see that they are actually there. So I'm not worried about it. We can deal with that later. The same is true for this trial. And keeping in mind that this is a uh, recording studio, we have lots of sources of light that can have an impact on this. I'd say that we actually have a very good set of uh, recordings. So we can go ahead and stop here. Before we let Jason go, we're going to have him perform a few more motions for us just so we have some other uh, material to discuss during the rest of this course. So, we're going to start with a squat, and we don't need 30 seconds, we're just going to do 10 seconds. I'm going to call this squat, add a counter. So, Jason, if you wouldn't mind coming to the middle of the room, what we're going to have you do is from a normal standing position, just squat down okay. and back up. And keeping your arms up will not only help you have balance, but also not get in the way of the markers. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Go ahead. So as you noticed, we have disappearing markers. And in fact, the squat is one of the harder um, motions to analyze because the ASIS markers get covered up. And we're going to discuss later on, and specifically in the Expert Builder series, some methods to compensate for that. But we're going to record a few more squats. So we got three squats, and now Let's get a more sports-like motion. And we're going to get a squat jump. So I want you to do basically the same thing. Okay. But as you go down, don't stop. Just come up okay. and jump. Sounds good. OK, are you ready? Go ahead. Excellent. In the following chapters, we're going to discuss a few of the problems that you might run into in the practical side of motion capture. So make sure you follow along with those as well because there are just a few tips that might help you save a lot of trouble in your life.